Welcome to Storytime, brought to you by OC Public Libraries. I'm Miss Nancy, and today we're reading Ida Always, written by Karen Levis and Charles Santoso, with permission from Simon & Schuster. Ida Always. Gus lived in a big park in the middle of an even bigger city. Buildings grew around him and shifted the shape of the sky. Zookeepers poked in and out. Visitors came and went. But every morning, when keys clicked and shoes clacked, Gus crawled out of his cave and spent his day with Ida. Ida was right there, always. When Gus tossed the ball, Ida was there to catch it. And when Gus splashed water, Ida was there to splash him right back. They chased and raced until school bells rang. Then the two friends flopped onto their favorite rock while the city pulsed around them. I wish we could see it, Gus sighed. You don't have to see it to feel it, said Ida. Listen. They heard buses groan, trucks rumble, police whistle, taxis honk, pigeons coo. People say, hey, wait, yo, hello, and children laugh. That's the city's heartbeat, said Ida. It's right here with us, always. When the sky grew dark, Gus and Ida waved goodnight and crawled off to their caves. With the subways humming underground, they added their snores to the sounds of their city. Every day was always the same. Until one morning, when keys clicked and shoes clacked, Gus crawled out. Ida wasn't there. Gus lumbered to Ida's cave. He heard her breathing, coughing, snoring, sleeping. He sat in their sunniest spot and waited. The coffee carts ground their beans and the squirrels squabbled over crumbs. Visitors shuffled in, keepers bustled out. Ida had never slept so late. Snow monkeys and taxi cabs screeched, ice cream trucks jingled. Still, Ida didn't come. Keeper Sonia came instead. Sonia told Gus that Ida was very sick. Usually, there's a way to make a sick bear better, but this time was different. Ida wouldn't hurt, but she would get tired and too weak to swim and play. Then one day, when her body stopped working, Ida would die. Sonia's voice was soft. But the words felt rough to Gus. His insides churned. His chin shook. The sky rumbled. Gus rushed to his friend. Don't go, he growled. Don't go. Don't go. Don't. Ida growled right back. Together they stomped and snarled. Their growls turned into howls so loud they filled up the zoo, rising higher than skyscrapers, scaring pigeons, surging towards stars. And then they stopped. Two friends folded into one shadow and slumped quietly on the rocks. Two bare noses sniffled, two bare breaths panted, two bare hearts echoed each other's beat. A plane roared overhead. Gus and Ida wondered where it was going. They wondered where Ida was going too. They wondered and guessed and imagined as they whispered nose to nose. Wherever I go, said Ida, I bet I'll always smell your fishy breath. That made Gus smile. He wasn't sure if he should, but Ida was giggling too. They let their laughs bounce back and forth between them. From then on, Ida spent most days in her cave. She slept a lot, but she didn't hurt. The keepers took good care of her. And Gus helped. He gathered her favorite toys and fishy treats. He brought her visitor's notes. There were growling days and laughing days and days that mixed them up. Sometimes Ida needed a moment alone, and sometimes Gus did too. 
But at the end of each day, Gus always told Ida, I'll miss you. And Ida always told Gus, I'll miss you too. They would cuddle until the sky grew dark and the lamps of the city clicked on. They would wave goodnight a thousand times, then wave a few times more. Then one sunny day, while Gus smoothed her fur, Ida curled into quiet. Her eyes fluttered shut and they didn't open anymore. Gus pressed one last pat into Ida's paw. The paper shared the news. The city cried. For days, the zoo was filled with goodbyes. Now when keys click and shoes clack, Gus crawls out of his cave knowing Ida won't be there. He dives and swims alone, and he eats his lunch with Sonia. They roll Ida's favorite yellow ball. Some days, Gus forgets. He looks for Ida on the rock, in her cave, behind the waterfall. When he remembers she isn't there, he rests in the shadows. But even in the shadows, the sounds of the city reach him. He hears buses groan, trucks rumble, police whistle, taxis honk, pigeons coo. People say, hey, wait, yo, hello, and children laugh. Gus smiles. He steps into the spot where Ida liked to soak in the sun. He listens to their city pulsing around him. He remembers that Ida said, you don't have to see it to feel it. The sidewalks tap and the streets hum. Gus's heart beats. And Ida is right there, always. Author's note. Ida Always is a fictional story inspired by the real pair of polar bears, Ida and Gus, who lived together in New York City's Central Park Zoo. The two bears swam, played, and cuddled together for many years. They were visited by more than 20 million people from all over the world and deeply cared for by their zoo keepers. By the time Ida became ill and died in 2011, she had created many wonderful memories for friends to remember her by, and when Gus died two years later, friends cherished their many memories of him too. While I was working on this story, I visited Gus. He sat on a large rock surrounded by the city skyline, with his head tilted toward the sun. Like other loved ones who have passed away, Gus and Ida will be with me always. C.L. Thanks for reading.